Do you need a swift kick in the rear end in your service for Jesus? Trust me, we all do at times. And one way that you and I can enter into this understanding of, oh my gosh, there were people before me who died for Jesus, is to learn about the martyrs. I think it's so important that we remember them. And in this video, I want to go over the story of Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna. This man actually knew the apostles of Jesus, and he ended up giving his life under the Roman Emperor Antonius in the year 156. The story I'm about to read you is actually the first documented martyrology, which is a study and an account of the martyrs. The first few hundred years of the church were literally full of blood and death. Rome was not playing games when it came to persecuting the Christians. And I guarantee you there's going to be elements in the story that I'm about to read that can shake you to your core if you allow them. Polycarp was a bishop of the church at Smyrna, which is actually one of the seven churches that Jesus spoke to in the book of Revelation. And at the end of this video, you're going to understand that the things that happened to Polycarp were actually prophesied by Jesus when he spoke to the church at Smyrna. And I'd like to start reading this letter written by the church of Smyrna to the church at Philomelium. After talking about somebody who was just martyred among the crowd, says at his glorious death, the whole crowd was so amazed at the bravery of the God-loving martyr and at the courage of Christians in general, that they began to shout together, kill the atheists, get Polycarp. It's interesting, know how they say kill the atheists. Why do they call them atheists? Well, it was because Christians didn't worship the Roman gods. And in the Roman culture, they actually had physical idols to worship, to look at, to venerate. Christians didn't have idols, therefore they were considered atheists. The wonderful Polycarp, however, was undisturbed at the news, and he had a fixed determination to stay in Smyrna. But when his friends pleaded with him to escape, he was persuaded to go to a farm not far from the city, where he stayed with a few others and prayed to the Lord day and night that peace be granted to churches throughout the world, as was his custom. Three nights before his capture, while at prayer, he saw a vision. The pillow under his head suddenly burst into flame and burnt up, which he interpreted to his friends as foretelling that for Christ's sake he would give up his life by fire. Since those hunting him were relentless, the love of the brethren obliged him to move on to another farm. Soon the pursuers arrived and arrested two of the servants there, one of whom, under torture, showed them to Polycarp's quarters. It was night and they found him lying in an upper bedroom. He could have moved to another house, but he had refused, saying, God's will be done. When he heard that they had come down, he went down and talked with them in such a cheerful, serene manner that they were astounded in view of, this, of his old age and confident air and wondered why there was such an anxiety to arrest such an old man. He ordered that a table be set for them and invited them to dine asking only for a single hour to pray undisturbed. This granted, he stood up and prayed, filled with the grace of the Lord to the astonishment of those present, many of whom grew distressed that so dignified and godlike a man was going to his death. Finally, he finished his prayer after remembering all with whom he had ever come into contact, small or great, famous or obscure, and the whole Catholic Church throughout the world. When the hour for departure had come, they set him on a donkey and led him into the city on great Sabbath. Herod, the chief of police, and his father, Nicetes, met him and transferred him to their carriage. Sitting beside him, they tried to dissuade him. What harm is there saying, Lord Caesar, and sacrificing, and so be saved? At first, Polycarp did not answer them. But when they persisted, he said, I will not do what you advise. Threats now replaced persuasion, and they ejected him so quickly that he scraped his shin in getting down from the carriage. But he walked on briskly to the stadium, as if nothing had happened. There, the noise was so great that no one could be heard. 
when Polycarp entered the stadium, a voice from heaven said, be strong and play the man, Polycarp. No one saw the speaker, but many of our people who were there heard the voice. As word spread that Polycarp had been arrested, there was a tremendous roar. When he approached, the proconsul asked him if he were Polycarp. And after he admitted it, he tried to dissuade him saying, respect your age, swear by Caesar's fortune, recant and say away with the atheists. Also would be like saying away with the Christians. But Polycarp swept his hand across the crowd, sighed, looked up to heaven and cried, away with the atheist, away with the Christians. But the governor pressed him, take the oath and I will set you free. Curse Christ. But Polycarp replied, for 86 years I have been his servant and he has never done me wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? But when he persisted, swear by Caesar's fortune, he replied, if you suppose that I could do this, pretending not to know who I am, listen carefully. I am a Christian. And if you wish to learn the teachings of Christianity, choose a day and you will hear them. The proconsul replied, persuade the people. Polycarp responded, you would be worthy of such a discussion for we have been taught to render appropriate honor to rulers and authorities ordained by God if it does not compromise us. As for the people, I don't feel a defense is appropriate. Then said the proconsul, I have wild beasts, Polycarp. I'll throw you to them if you don't change your mind. Call them, he replied. For we cannot change our mind from better to worse, but to change from cruelty to justice is excellent. Again, he countered, if you disregard the beast, I'll have you consumed by fire unless you repent. But Polycarp declared, you threaten a fire that burns for a time and is quickly extinguished. Yet a fire that you know nothing about awaits the wicked in the judgment to come and in eternal punishment. But what are you waiting for? Do what you will. As he said these things and many other things, he was filled with courage and joy and his features with such grace that they did not pale with alarm at what was said to him. The proconsul was astounded and sent his herald into the center of stadium to announce three times, Polycarp has confessed that he is a Christian. At this, the whole multitude of Gentiles and Jews living in Smyrna boiled with anger and shouted at the top of their lungs, this is the teacher of Asia, the father of the Christians, the destroyer of our gods, who teaches many not to offer sacrifice or worship them. They then demanded that Philip, the Asiarch, let a lion loose on Polycarp. But he said that it, this would be illegal since he had given up the sports. Then in a general shout arose that Polycarp should be burned alive. Indeed, the vision of the burning pillow had to be fulfilled. And turning to the faithful with him, he said prophetically, I must be burned alive. In less time than it takes to tell it, the crowd then gathered logs and kindling from the workshops and baths as usual, the Jews in particular. When the pyre was ready, he took off all his clothes, loosened his belt, and tried to take off his shoes, though he was unused to doing this because the faithful had vied with each other for this privilege. As they were going to nail him to the grid for fire, he said, let me be. For he who enables me to endure the flames will also enable me to remain in them unmoved, even without nails. So they bound him without nailing, hands behind his back, like a noble ram from a great flock, as a whole burnt offering acceptable to Almighty God. Polycarp then prayed, O Father of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we know you, I bless you for this day and hour, that I may, with the martyrs, share in the cup of Christ for the resurrection of eternal life in both soul and body, and in the immortality of the Holy Spirit. May I be received among them today as a rich and acceptable sacrifice, according to your divine fulfillment. For this reason, I praise you for everything. I bless and glorify you through the eternal high priest, Jesus Christ, your beloved son. 
through whom be the glory to you and the Holy Spirit, both now and in the ages to come. Amen. When he had finished, the fire was lit and a great flame blazed up. And we who were privileged to witness it saw something marvelous. The fire assumed the shape of a room, like a billowing ship's sail that surrounded the martyr's body inside it. Not like burning flesh, but gold and silver being refined in a furnace. We also smelled a pleasant fragrance, like the scent of incense or other costly spices. Finally, the lawless mob, seeing that his body could not be consumed by fire, ordered an executioner to slash him with a sword. When he did so, blood gushed out and quenched the fire, and the entire crowd was amazed at the difference between the unbelievers and the believers, the elect. Indeed, he was one of the elect, the most wonderful apostolic and prophetic teacher of our time, bishop of the church in Smyrna, for every word that he uttered was and will be fulfilled. We need only look at the pages of history, true documented accounts of people who gave their life for Jesus. And we need not be surprised that these things did happen and indeed do happen because Jesus said they would. He says in Revelation 2 verse 10, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. If you would like to get updates about more stories of the martyrs, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, and leave a comment if you would like me to go over any particular church father or martyr in history. And never forget. Mm, keep it by. Woo!